All right, the first public test of the futuristic Hyperloop train took place in Las Vegas Wednesday. And while the demo only focused on one piece of the high-speed transport system, it still excited those in the tech industry. Three, two, one, start. Envisioned by Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk, the Hyperloop would transport passenger-filled pods through special tubes at 750 miles per hour. Lance Ulanoff, chief correspondent and editor-at-large of Mashable, was at the test earlier. Okay, so Lance, explain first of all what Hyperloop One tested, because it wasn't this full test with a pod and passenger dummies, right? No, just the propulsion system. There was a little sled uh, sitting on a track, and it wasn't even levitated off the track. It actually had little, like, cots almost on it, so it could slide along the track. Uh, the propulsion system uh, is kind of what they're talking about. It's got these things called stators that are basically like these electromagnets, and there's the white line that you can see there. That's the electromagnet magnets, which sends a pulse that basically rockets the thing forward. It's sort of like this opposite magnetic reaction, and those stators don't even run the whole length of the track. So it was really just to show that the propulsion system could work, nothing else. But it's important because it's the first physical test we have of this, this idea called Hyperloop, this promise that, that appeared sort of almost out of nowhere from the brain of Elon Musk in a 72 or 76 page document uh, a few years ago. Uh, this is only one company, by the way, that is trying to build this, this next generation transportation system. I mean, how feasible do you think this really is, Lance? And I just want to make sure I'm clear. Is it kind of like back in the olden days when they had those pneumatic tubes at the banks where you drive up, you stick your thing? No, no. no not like no, that at all? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. No, it's not. The, the only thing that, that connects there is that, yeah, they're tubes. They're tubes. But it's not, it is not, a, you know, a pneumatic tube uses air pressure to sort of shoot something forward. Right. Uh, this is actually going to be working against the pressure that could build up in the tube because one of the things they talk about is when you take a cap and put it inside a sealed tube, you have to adjust for and deal with the pressure that can build up in front of the tube. Mm. Uh, and they have a number of ways of doing that. They can actually suck in some of the air from in front of these capsules and then shoot it underneath to levitate the, the capsule. Uh, or they can actually put a number of, of these uh, pods sort of going into the tube together. And what they do is they kind of help balance some of that pressure that can build up. So it's absolutely not a pneumatic tube, uh, but it is all of these technologies that they kind of have to develop individually and then put together uh, into this system that can uh, allow people to move at you know near uh, basically sub sonic speeds to get from one place to the other much more quickly and maybe efficiently than they would if they were driving or going to taking a plane because that's pain in the neck so it's um, it's exciting. I can't imagine how much this would eventually cost. Is there any kind of time frame about when Hyperloop could be open to the public? Yeah, well, they said today that uh, they thought they could transport freight by 2019 and potentially people by 2021, uh, which feels actually quite aggressive since, uh, well, this is a, you know, they did this in 15 months, but they have so much more to do. I mean, they have to design the pods. I kept asking them in particular about the pods that they want people to ride in are completely sealed. There oh. are no windows. Wow. There's no windows in the tube. So, you know, I wanted to know, well, how are you going to deal with that? I mean, people like me would freak out. Right, right. Airplanes are tough enough and they have windows, right? Some people can't That's even right. handle that. Yeah, no, really great, great idea, great question. All right, so what did you really think of the test, Lance? I mean, was it inspiring, underwhelming? Is it what you thought it was going to be? Here, wait, I will pause. There's the test. Three, two, one. <laughs> One. It was like two Sorry. seconds. It was so <laughs> fast that there was a moment where I wasn't sure I had actually seen the test. Right, uh, right. And, you know, it's, you've got to, I had to really, the enthusiasm, the only way to get really excited about it was by talking to the people at the company. And they were all beaming. Right. Because they told me it had gone absolutely perfectly. But if you blinked, you 
<laughs> literally missed it. And all that, by the way, all that, that stuff that you're seeing fly up at the end, yeah. that's really just part of this test. That's a sand area, and there's a couple of little things that stick out of the bottom of it that drag into the sand to slow it down at the end. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're going to have a real braking system, which, again, is something they have to develop. Right. I know. I can't even imagine that. How do you have a braking system test there, 750 miles per hour, if that's your speed? Just incredible yep. to think about. All right, well, I want to see you in there in the pod, Lance. <laughs> we'll see how that mm -hmm. goes. Then. <laughs> Say, <laughs> <laughs> Lance Ulanov, thanks so much. My pleasure.